We've got a long year ahead of us. While this cancelled series of ours is only officially four pieces long so far, you can be certain that there is plenty of other examples to be explored as we continue through the year. And by my calculations, we have about 10 cancelled slots for all of 2021 out of like 50 to 60 videos that we're making in the whole year. But today I think is a bit of a special case as we're using cancelled in every form of the word. There are plenty of cancelled projects deleted for unknown reasons, yet they seem to have so much potential going for them. But I think since we're talking about 90s gaming icon Duke Nukem, the issues for this kind of project can really be seen miles away. Now for those unsure of the world of Duke Nukem, the rundown basically goes like this. Starting in the early 1990s, the Duke Nukem franchise is a Doom-style, guns a blazing shooter fest with some impressive 2.5D technology at the time, starring a comedic parody caricature of 1980s action figures, borrowing traits from the height of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone and the likes as being the ultimate male power fantasy vessel. He's big, he's masculine, and he's mean. Being a totally dominating force against alien invasions, his favourite pastime is grotesque one-liners, desecrating corpses, and showing a complete lack of respect to everybody around him. He's so strong and overpowered that soldiers have no value in his eyes, other men are roadblocks on his path, and women? Well, I don't think I really need to articulate with words what Duke Nukem thinks about women. There's plenty of room for debate on the values, ideals, and intentions of the Duke Nukem franchise, which we'll mention plenty later, but that's the basic foundation you should know as we get into the idea of this actually getting a movie adaptation at one point in its lifespan. Now, Duke Nukem is old. 30 years old, actually. Huh, that anniversary actually makes me kind of nervous that something is planned, but probably not. The idea of waiting around for the next update is something fans of the Duke Nukem franchise are certainly not new to. After all, the first three mainline games came out within five years of each other, whilst the fourth one had a delay of 12 years. The game had assuredly been stuck in development hell. How fitting, I guess. And the wait hadn't been worth it, with the end product being incredibly outdated in all sense of the term, from design to tone to modern attitudes. And the development hell aspect of that game translates right into this movie as well. There's been a few movie adaptations in fact, with the first being announced back in the late 1990s, right in the, you know, good old days, with producer Lawrence Kasanoff said to be working on it, previously known for the likes of the 1990s Mortal Kombat movie, clearly wanting to dominate that exact market in that decade. Following up on him on IMDb goes to reveal he also created the notoriously terrible Food Fight movie, as well as the upcoming new Mortal Kombat movie and the untitled Tetris sci-fi project. Wow. From this early project comfortably sat in its heyday, the plot was to feature aliens invading Duke's favourite strip club. However, development of the film didn't advance any further than pre-production, primarily due to funding problems. And the theme of never reaching the production phase will be a curse that continues with each recurring project. In 2001, plans for a live-action movie produced by Kasanoff's company, Threshold Entertainment, was in the works, but again, was never produced. Skip ahead seven years to 2008 when all Duke Nukem spin-offs had been released and almost every portable game had come out too, and the producer of Max Payne the movie had popped up, Scott Fay, revealing to IGN that they were planning to produce a new project. This guy, according to IMDB, isn't really known for much else. Already off to a dreadful start, really. Still, his ideas had more exposure to the public for us to dissect. In this rendition of the Duke Nukem world, Faye had hoped to set up a Duke Nukem scenario that would compel a studio to finance a full feature version. Certainly, he thought, there's a large audience that knows and loves this character, and he planned to expand Duke's storyverse in a very significant major way without abandoning or negating any element that's been used to introduce Duke to the next-gen platforms. Huh. I guess this Fey guy was a tad ahead of his time somewhat, trying to expand a cinematic universe of Duke, almost. Even still, this project soon fell to the wayside as one would expect, again likely due to funding considering Scott was looking to reach for studio funding first. Now we're not done here yet, but if you want to suggest another video for this cancelled series, tell me on Discord. I pop up every week for an hour after a video comes out. And for other media of mine, here's my Twitter tweeting at least three times a day this year, and my Insta releasing a story every 
every day too. Otherwise, if you found this video on your homepage, then scroll down and subscribe already. And you know how this whole graph graphic works anyway. And if you've done all of this already, then thank you for the support. Now, let's jump ahead in time. In 2017, a whole nine years further, Gearbox Software CEO, the company that owns the right to Duke Nukem, hinted that there was work being done on a Duke Nukem film. And in March of 2018, the biggest news so far came out of the floodgates. Big man himself, John Cena, was announced to star as the titular controversial character. And really, it sounds like it could have been the best casting scenario possible. By this point, Duke had seen its last mainline release and was six years on from that. And this last game, Duke Nukem Forever, proved to highlight the red flag issue that would weigh down the entire franchise. Simply put, Duke Nukem is incredibly, incredibly controversial, more so now in the modern age than ever. The whole point of Duke in the 90s was to be a parody of the times of buff action men of the 80s, but translating that over to the 21st century with the same male power fantasy outlook just comes off as a massive bait for the mob of cancel culture. Now sure, there's plenty of heated debates around whether Duke Nukem is actually sexist with the creators and the passionate fanbase saying it's all done with humour in mind and not meant to be taken too seriously at all, but at the same time, the character itself plays these moments incredibly straight, and the stigma of attitudes in the gaming industry has already had enough of an uphill battle without Duke Nukem there. I mean, Duke Nukem Forever even has a multiplayer mode called Capture the Babe, where the normal flag is represented by a girl you have to kidnap. And when you do, she squirms over your shoulder and if she is too feisty, you literally have to spank her to calm her down. Ooh. Not to mention the myriad of other examples. The game opens up with a certain insinuation right off the bat, and the fate of this outdated Olsen twins gag is having them both taken by aliens, impregnated, and then not even saved. Just the punching bag for another one-liner. So, how on earth do you juggle this incredibly dated character in a genuine way that would satisfy both the hardcore fanbase of the franchise since its inception, as well as the modern world with its much more confrontative and noble attitude? Well, hiring John Cena at least sounds like the best possible first step in the motion to me, as the dude accentuates an undebatable vibe of wholesomeness and likability. He's got the charisma, the charm, and humor to boot, all traits that Duke simply does not these days. And merging the two would, in theory, hopefully create a more likeable protagonist, even with his more edgier aspects. In my head, I can only really see this character translating well on screen if he was treated as more of a comedic punching bag, being some kind of team player who's humorously out of touch and addressing the issues he raises as part of the script. Like being the Drax of the group who's helpful in a fight, but man, he's just so detached from what's right in reality. Alternatively, it'd be a matter of developing his character away from this caricature a tad by, again, having him have to cooperate with a team instead of being a solo superhero. <gasps> have the other females in the story actually act realistically or even empowering, and maybe that open a door for Duke to show some genuine respect to those who would seem to earn it. And I guess it would be in character that these characters have to do so much to earn a hint of respect from Duke. Really though, it's an incredibly difficult task to handle, as that development alone would be a stark change from the established Duke of like the last 20 years, or 30 years even. But okay, that's my two cents of speculation on how to make this thing work. What was actually the plan in 2018? Because it turns out we do actually know a good bit about this progressively regressive IP and his movie adaptation. For a start, more notable people started popping into roles, with the producer of Assassin's Creed coming in, Jean-Julien Baronet, previously also known for Go Recon Alpha and the Rabbids Invasion TV show. Interesting. But hey, it's directly in the field of video game adaptation, so it seems like a fine pick. Even if rocky in a little places. Furthermore, companies added to the foundation included Paramount and Michael Bay's Platinum Dunes, which, I mean, actually makes a whole lot of sense. Having Michael Bay involved at least a tiny bit would line up perfectly with the world of Duke Nukem, being the ultimate male bait of big guns and explosions as is the drawing point of Duke Nukem's gameplay, as well as the more sexualized nature and mature themes of some of his other films. Obviously, I don't need to be the one to tell you that these guys contributed to that live action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, though they've actually been tackling horror more with like The Purge and Quiet Plays and stuff. Still, in this age, I 
I struggle to see how tackling Duke's tone would ever be perceived as tasteful. Regardless, it was a hurdle being tackled, with regular meetings with writers being conducted and many quotes coming from this phase. During this time, it was asserted that the brawny Nukem and his catchphrases like Yeah, piece of cake, see you in hell, and It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum and I'm all out of gum. Had solid potential as a live action movie character. And in regards to Tone, he's said to be like Deadpool in terms of being able to break the fourth wall. They also said that they saw a lot of humor in his confronting the values of today while trying to save the world, which almost sounds like he'd want to attack the PC attitude of the world, which would definitely have been interesting to see play out to say the least. Hmm. They even went on to say that Duke is exactly the kind of very blunt character that we need in the world today. Uh, certainly an optimistic outlook, I guess. Of course, the actual execution of this idea would be a whole other matter, as later down the line a quote came out as follows. We're working on Duke Nukem right now with John Cena. It's gonna be about tone. How do you nail that tone in the way that Deadpool nailed the tone? I think we have to do that, and if we don't get the tone right, then we're not going to make the movie. And what do you know? They haven't made the movie. Traversing this incredibly thin and edgy line is something that just doesn't seem practical in any sense. Sometime later in 2018, Paramount was no longer involved in the project, and further to that, in January of 2019, the voice actor for Duke Nukem in the games, Johnson John, went on to state that no movie was in development at all. The project was seemingly cancelled. Of course, John St. John might not be the absolute best source of information, as it's very possible that some motions would go on without his knowledge, especially since he's not actually involved in the casting of this live-action adaptation movie, but he is usually somewhat involved in all things Duke for self-explainable reasons. On all fronts, Duke Nukem seemed to be dead. Even on the video game front, Duke Nukem Forever released back in 2011, and Though in 2015 there was news that early concept work had been done on a new game, by 2017 an employee stated that there was no interest in returning to the franchise. And with it being 2021, that fact seems to be all the more cemented as the truth. While researching more into Duke Nukem, I did also find one opinionated article that kind of wraps up Duke Nukem's faults to a T. Talking about Duke Nukem Forever, it goes as follows. The reason the modern remake was such a flop was simply because the character doesn't hold up when compared to the world and stories of modern games. Duke himself starred in a game where his inspirations were propped up by technical achievements and design brilliance. Take that away and he's just a big guy quoting someone else and waving money at women. It just won't translate well these days. And with this big project being the final nail in the coffin, it seems Duke's only appearance on the big screen is relegated to a small cameo appearance in Ready Player One, among the many, many, many other pop culture references collecting the same accolade. Except... Just before starting to write this video, one more piece of news came out, with reports in September 2020 popping up that the project was beginning to move forwards again, John Cena and all. Interesting. Not really what I was expecting. According to this source with Cena's star rise, the project is now back on the table. And that's the only reasoning? Confirmed by a single tweet with a Duke Nukem gif in it? Who said this anyway? Oh, it's We Got This Covenant again. <sighs> These are the same guys spouting a Tom Holland Zelda adaptation, so no. Duke Nukem hasn't really been uncancelled, but if he was, then I'm certain he'll be re-cancelled shortly afterwards anyway, either by the production team thinking of the logistics, or the larger society of our PC world. The fact of the matter is, the main cut and thrust of this character's personality is brash, out of touch, and decidedly un-PC, and making that work on a big screen film just doesn't seem worth the battle. Sure, I guess it's a shame that a protagonist can't have a love for guns and women like they could in the 90s, but boiling women down in this world as just eye candy, fan service, and literal objects just doesn't fly and it's kind of boring for a narrative. Duke Nukem is crude, sexist, and awfully dated. His movie has been stuck in development hell just as long as his latest mainline game, but if Duke Nukem Forever is anything to go off, any wait will certainly not be worth it. He may be a cult favorite among fans in the 90s, 
but he just doesn't hold any sway against the general audiences of today. I think it'd be best if he stays as a distant memory of a different time and doesn't try to return in any form again today. It's just not worth the debate. For now though, I'd best end it off here. Next week we'll cover... a nostalgic train. My name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit.